Hi, this is Michael. Uh, welcome. Welcome to our webinar. Let's give people uh, about a minute to come in. As we uh, as we come into this webinar, uh, tell us where you are. As you know, I am in Seattle, and uh, it's a beautiful day. And uh, I looked at weather. Uh, we're going to hit the 90 degrees this weekend. That's the first time we hit 90 this year. So looking forward to a beautiful weekend. Uh, tell us where you're from. And uh, for some of us, I still keep a uh, 610 uh, error code phone. That means uh, Pennsylvania, Allentown, Pennsylvania, originally. Um, so we see some, uh, we see AJ. Hello, AJ. I know that Lee had a call, a chat with you, AJ. Uh, LA, Wisconsin, Quebec, Ecuador, Guillermo, welcome, welcome. Raleigh, Car uh, North Carolina, Dallas. Nice to see you, Nathan, too. Columbia, Pedro, great. Stylicum, Washington, not too far from us. Wow, this is the, the fast the fast time we, we hit 100 attendees today. That is fantastic. <laughs> All right, cool. Hey, good, good one, AJ. All right, let us get started. Um, Great. Hey, thank you. And I see a lot of I see some uh, a lot of uh, uh, familiar names. I, I hope one day we get to see your faces. Um, and though I see we see a lot of uh, new friends here on the webinar as well. Welcome, welcome. And uh, thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule. And uh, for the next uh, 45 minutes, uh, we're going to be talking a lot about a easy path to MSP security focused on GDAP teams and SharePoint scenarios. And uh, I was advised by my marketing team uh, not to use the, which is something I love to use, which is easy button, which I think that I should speak to truth about what we are talking about today, easy button to MSP security. But hey, this is a live thing and who's stopping us, right? So easy button to MSP security. And uh, speaking of live, we have a team of experts. These are unsung heroes uh, in the backstage right now, helping uh, you to ask, answer any question that you may have. And I'll try to do my best, uh, Lee and I, to answer all of your questions today. But throughout the conversation, please hit us up. Uh, we have a team ready for you. And then toward the end, we're going to put together a special offer just for the attendees of this webinar. And uh, as in the last couple of times, we have a one lucky, we're going to have one lucky winner uh, for a $100 gift certificate, and then we'll reach out to you. So stay tuned. Uh, let's uh, let's dive right in. So my name is Michael, um, and uh, I'll defer to Lee to uh, introduce himself. Hey, everyone. My name is Lee Ramsey. I'm a technical product manager for Security Manager, and I'll be demoing all the great stuff we've been building for you all today. Thank you, Lee. Um, I love today's conversation. And for some of us who attended our conversation last month, uh, this is like a, a little sequel, but unlike the movies, you don't need to go to the first movie to watch this one because, and I do encourage you to go see the other one, but today we'll be talking a lot, of, a lot about scenarios requested, asked for by your peers. That's what they want to talk about. That's why we originally weren't going to do this particular one, but we're like, wow, the, by popular demand, let's do this thing. And just like last time, the, for the doers only, right? This webinar is not about hair fairy marketing storytelling, which is great, which is fine. But if you're coming for a marketing webinar, uh, this is not it. This is really about let's dive into the to the data, to the product. Uh, speaking of the data, let's go to the next slide, please. And this is not from a survey. And I do do survey as a marketer. Uh, survey is great, but this is real data, real voices from 700 leading MSPs from 25,000 MSP customers. And now last time, last month we had more than a million. Now we have well over a million SMB users, closing on 2 million SMB users in our product today. So we're gonna hit, get to hear, hey, what are some of the best practices, the things that we can glean from almost 2 million users in dealing with M365 security? And hopefully we can learn a little bit from each other. The next slide, please. And the first thing I always think about is for our partners and for the customers, um, what's the environment that we live in? 
Well, for most of us, we live in Microsoft 365 ecosystem that we're dealing with Teams and the mailbox and emails and SharePoint and OneDrive or OneNow in terms of security management and automation. And just like last time, we did a little bit of this foundational thinking on the four zones as we think about Microsoft 365 security. And if I were to use a house analogy, um, we also want to know, be clear on where things are for the customers and for the partners. And that is a secure school, right? All of us need to know that. We see that. And the second thing is using a house analogy again. Once we have foundation right, let's get some of the basics. Let's get the you know, locks on the door, identity and access management. And the last month, Lee did a demo of a scenario on that. And today, we're going to be thinking a lot about a GDAP, which we can go into more detail on that identity and access management. And then last month, we spent most of the conversation on mailbox and the email security, which is something that's very near and dear to all of our hearts to, with our customers. But also, 80% of your peers said, yes, while mailbox and email security is critical, and it is, but many of them start to move into other collaboration um, work, workloads like a Teams and SharePoint. So today, the conversation will be focusing on identity and access management, and also Teams, SharePoint, and collaboration. So that, these are two zones that we'll be focusing today's conversation on. But I want to show this kind of an overview of how we think about security management and automation. So before we get started, let's start with a, a quick poll, interesting poll. Um, so as we know, Microsoft is making a big deal on how authentication partners have with the customer tenants, right, to move from DAP to GDAP. And more, uh, more granularly, and how do we partners are motivated to do this thing? Because there's an urgency to make the, uh, the migration by the 22nd of May. So the question is, where are you on GDAP for this audience? Um, choice A, I already moved my customer relationship to GDAP. B, we know, I know I have to go from DAP to GDAP, but I still have to get it done. And C, I love our marketing team, uh, GDAP, what is that? So let's give people maybe 15, 20 seconds. All right, let's see. All right. So for some of us, you already moved to uh, GDAP. Fantastic. Congratulations. Um, for many of us, more than half of us, um, and for for the uh, for for some of us, thank you for entertaining us with the last option. I I hope uh, I hope. I hope you, of course, you know what GTAP is uh, for, for this audience. So, but for many of us, uh, we know we have to do it, but um, uh, we still have to do it though. So for this audience, it's not a new thing, right? GDAP, the thing that's been around, by the way, a little trivia. And as I was, I was preparing for this thing, I'm like, hey, let me be crisp on what the, you know, we know what GDAP is, but it's granular, delicate, atomy, privileges. But when I was doing some research, by the way, online from Microsoft source, is either P stand for either privileges or some other places from Microsoft is it permissions. So the truth is probably still out there what that P stands for. Um, so we know that after May 22nd, you can still do it, the migration, but you'll be very manual. You have to escalate. You have to go talk to customer, talk to Microsoft. It's going to be time consuming. And frankly, it's no fun to actually to do it like that. Wouldn't it be great to have an automation tool that we can act as an easy button Therefore, what I said earlier, easy button to help the partners get GDAP compliant and improve security. So instead of me keep talking about it, I would love to defer this to Lee and show us in the product the great automation that he built to make this transformation super easy. Lee? Absolutely. Let me share my screen here. Give that just a moment. Yeah, I think 
you know, as I talk with partners, um, as I answer questions here on webinars, as I answer them in one-on-one -on -one, one conversations, you know, I get a lot of questions, but two really common ones that I get are, you know, are you compatible with GDAP, security manager that is, and, you know, hey, I have a lot of customers, how do I connect them to security manager? So, you know, I can take advantage of all the you know benefits that we were talking about, dashboards, finding and fixing, all the solutions that you guys offer. And so today I'm going to kind of showcase both of those things. So first and foremost, it's important to note that um, we have a integration with Microsoft Partner Center. So it's going to allow you to um, import your customers from Partner Center into Security Manager and then also connect those customers to the various Microsoft services they're in. Um, Basically, in the product, it's going to live under the Settings tab, Integrations, Microsoft Partner Center. Um, you'll click in. Uh, it'll prompt you for your uh, Microsoft Partner Center credentials. Re need, they require a global admin. Uh, they do also need the admin agent, agent role, and then they also need um, to be prompted for MFA. So make sure that security piece is in play. So once you do that, the system's going to go and it's going to query the tenant it's going to find you know all your different customers all that good stuff so down here at the bottom and uh, it doesn't really get easier than this as far as an easy button goes we have this little toggle that's defaulted to on which um, essentially what it'll do is if you have a customer where and you only have a dap relationship so delegated admin uh, privileges uh, what this will go ahead and do is it'll create all the necessary infrastructure for you to have a GDAP relationship with that customer. Still at global admin, um, it'll give you the two-year length, which is the maximum allowed under the new GDAP uh, program, excuse me. And uh, that's really all you have to do. Um, it's also really handy because if you already have GDAP, um, relationships with customers it's not going to do anything with those if you've already run through this migration before but want to like reconnect a customer still can uh, it's not going to add anything else so i'll show you what it looks like and then uh, to go through the process and i'll show you what it kind of looks like on the back end in microsoft uh, 365 and partner center so um, super simple uh, click next You'll get a list of your customers. So you can select any or all customers to import into security manager and migrate. Um, I'm gonna just pick one for the sake of this uh, particular demo. We got Wonka down here at the bottom. We're gonna import and connect. The next page is gonna prompt you to pick the types of connections that you wanna add. Um, Graph and um, Microsoft 365 are required to populate the dashboards within Security Manager. We'll show you what that looks like here in a moment. Um, and then of course you have all these other services that you can connect to. So I'm gonna just use the defaults for now. I'm gonna save and continue and then this piece here, you just connect and go through an authentication loop for each of those services. And what that'll do is it'll connect each of your customers to each of those services. So super quick, super easy. And then once you're done with that, uh, the migration will happen on the back end. The system will start importing those customers. It'll start creating those connections uh, and then pulling that data into Security Manager so you can find and fix uh, those security vulnerabilities. So uh, let me show you what that looks like on the back end. So once that's been done, I kind of pre-cooked this a little bit so that way um, you can see it. So this is a M365 tenant uh, at the admin view. You can see I'm in this teams and groups section. I'm looking at active teams and groups. I'm looking at security groups specifically. And you'll see what we've created down here is a Skykick Cloud Manager customer GDAP admin. So it's gonna go ahead and create this security group for you. It's gonna add the user that you went through that process with to that group. And then when you go into Partner Center, you know, take a look at your customer list. Done a little bit of testing. <laughs> uh, here's our customer down here at the bottom. And then as we go into uh, admin relationships, you'll see that show up. So we will create the admin relationship here as well. Give that a moment. Anytime, Partner Center. Well, while that's loading, oh, hey, there it goes. I just had to, I had to tease it a little bit. Um, you'll see that we create the relationship there. One thing that's important to note is that currently Microsoft only allows um, an individualized uh, relationship name for each customer. Uh, that's why you have this GUID at the end. So all of these will be unique. And then if you pop into that relationship, you'll notice that we have that security group created uh, or not created, but um, tagged with those permissions here. Um, and that's that same security group from 
back here. So you can augment, update that if you want by adding uh, additional users to it, that kind of thing. Uh, the only thing that Skykick is going to do in that migration process, though, is pull in that admin that you went through the process with. So um, super simple, really easy. Um, like Michael was saying, there's a, you know, a, Microsoft's kind of signaling a, signaling a deadline at May 22nd, so a little under two weeks from now um, to kind of get that straightened away. You may have a strategy in mind, might be technically difficult to implement. One great thing about this is it's going to do two things for you. One, it's going to get you all the connections you need for so Security Manager, uh, so you're good to go there. And then two, it'll also buy you some time um, as well so that you can, you know, iron out your strategy if you want, because uh, the thing that Microsoft's saying they're going to be doing at May, uh, May 22nd, they're going to start um, migrating those customers who are on a DAP-only relationship to a lesser permission GDAP relationship. So some of you may lose the access you're used to in Partner Center um, if you don't make the change. So um, really handy, really timely. Uh, Skykick's always here to help MSPs be successful in the cloud, and this is just another way we wanted to help you all out with uh, this really critical change. Back to you, Michael. Is super Lee. I nothing more I could add. Thank you. That's fantastic. Um, a couple of real things here. I put uh, this not part of the rehearsal, right? I mean, part of the real questions here. Uh, I'll take this one uh, from Ling. Could we cover enable security deployment, regulatory compliance, and data loss prevention DLP out of the box? Ling, I just want to make sure we did not plan that question. <laughs> we have something exactly for that. So stay tuned. For about 10, 15 minutes, uh, we'll, we'll be hitting that thing out of the park. Uh, Lee will hit that thing out of the park. So stay tuned for that. Um, another question, let's take some real uh, uh, no, relevant question on GDAP, Lee. For this one, for all of Skykex's feature to work as expected, uh, what roles need to be assigned in GDAP? Anything other than global admin? Yeah, today it's a global admin, um, and that's simply because all of the uh, things that you can do in Security Manager, and you know, we're going to show some of those here in a moment. But um, you know, obviously, you can see this. Uh, the you know the dashboard those are populated with you know a bunch of data from your your different tenants but beyond that just looking at the data security manager is really designed to allow you to actually administer uh, security uh, updates make changes to policies you know all of those things where you know the actual least privileged role is a global admin for some of those things and so it needs that higher level permission just so you can uh, ensure that you're able to do all the things that you need to do to protect your customers. Yeah, but by the way, just thank you, Lee. I just want to say mm -hmm. some of these questions we have been answering from our, you know, the Unsung Hero team uh, live. But I feel like you know we can, you know, up level it and also show the visibility to everybody. That's why I'm repeating the question to all of us here. Um, the the other maybe I take two more because there's so many questions on on, on this one. Um, the other one, we've been uh, from someone here from Jeff. Hey, we've been on Cloud Manager. Thank mm -hmm. you for a month. Um, all our clients are synced to Skykick Microsoft Partner Center already, but none of our clients tenants have the Skykick account you just reviewed. Oh yeah, that's a that's a great uh, great call out. So uh, the Partner Center integration uh, method has been available for quite a while now, um, and so if you went through it, you know, a month ago, two months ago. A while, you know, a while back, um, you didn't have the opportunity to migrate. Uh, that came in, I think, two weeks ago or so. Uh, and so what you're able to do, if you wish, is you can actually go back through that partner center integration flow that I just showed you, uh, and uh, you can migrate uh, all of those users to that new uh, GDAP, role, those G GDAP roles, which is sort of, again, important for two reasons. Like, you know, one is it sort of staves off the, <laughs> the, the Microsoft threat of, hey, we're going to, uh, you know, kill some of your access. Uh, and then it'll also make sure that you have the latest and greatest connections when Microsoft does start shutting off those um, uh, those DAP permissions. There might be some aspects of Security Manager that won't be able to connect without some kind of reauthentication due to that. Great. Uh, we have more questions, but let, let's keep moving. I'll, I'll try to do my best to <laughs> answer all the questions and with our teams here. But one question I want to call out, Karen, um, how do we get how do we get security manager added to our Skykick portal? Um, what does it cost? Uh, absolutely, we'll answer a question. But if you don't mind, Karen, I'm gonna uh, keep that because I think you get a fuller picture of what security manager could do for you for the partners. I'll absolutely answer a question directly. But uh, let me, if you don't mind, I'll I'll hold out to that just for a little bit. But I'll definitely answer the question. Okay, we have more questions. So our team is hard is busy <laughs> working to to answer you. Uh, so keep them coming. Love it. Let's keep moving. Um, so let's go to the next slide, please. 
So we have we've talked a lot about you know identity access management, and then uh, if you haven't migrated to GDAP, we have an offer just for you. Do it for free. Do it now do, within the next ten days. Make your life so much easier, right? So building on the work that we have done together last month and over the last time, um, eighty percent of your peers said email workflow is is critical, but they have to be moving into collaboration. And as when I think about collaboration workload, um, the first the thing that came up into my mind is uh, SharePoint. And uh, I, I must uh, say that it's a little personal to me, SharePoint, because I was one of the first two product manager on Office 365 back in 2010, 2011 timeframe. So yes, I did do some real work before I moved into marketing. Um, it is near and dear to my heart. And we know SharePoint is a huge workload. Microsoft says there are more than 200 million users. So just how big is it? Because I used like I used SharePoint to design websites and uh, content management and so forth. So I, I went online and looked for some lifecycle management framework and I find one um, just on, next slide please. I found one just on the content management and SharePoint can do a lot more. And I don't want you to look at any of those words. Right, because then if we start doing that, I, we can be joining the rest of a webinar today and probably you know many more hours just on the SharePoint. But my whole point is that look at it, capture storage management just on one capability alone on SharePoint, northbound, southbound, east and west, there's so much things going on and it's really hard to secure SharePoint as a as a management capability. But what we have done is we looked across all of these things, the best practices from Microsoft, from a partner, and it really boiled down to three things as you think about securing SharePoint as a, as a main work, uh, workload for you. The three things are, number one, who should be here? As in, is your business in control of who has access to SharePoint with perhaps with modern authentication? Who should be here, number one? Number two, what should they do when they come here? Essentially, how they share data with each other. Do they have the right governance, compliance policies in place? How about if they want to access anonymous links, how do you disable or how do you manage that? And the third thing is like many of us, we work with people within our company, but also with people outside our company. How do you contain the exposure mostly within the virtual walls? How do you mitigate and minimize external access and sharing? So those are three things from thousands of capabilities that we, you can potentially do. If you do these three things, it's gonna increase your secure score noticeably, right? So Lee, um, instead of, again, instead of me talking, can you share a few pointers? You see what I did there, SharePoint? A few pointers on what, type of automation you built in, uh, in Security Manager to help our partners. Absolutely. That was so bad. <laughs> it's a great pun. Um, absolutely. So, you know, like you alluded to, I think, you know, one of the things that's really important and we didn't touch on it super heavily here other than, you know, it's important. So we have a couple of webinars back. We, we talked really a, a lot about uh, secure score and I really encourage you to take a look at that if, you know, you're curious about it. But basically the distillation is that um, what we found from our very best partners is that secure score is a way for them to have a tangible security conversation with their customers. It allows, you know, partners to kind of say, hey, don't take my word for it, right? This is what Microsoft is saying you know, these are the recommendations that they have as well as a, you know, industry leader in, um, you know, cloud computing and uh, all that good stuff, right? So, um, like I say, we have a lot more on that topic. Um, I'm not going to cover it super heavily today, but I wanted to kind of just frame that up a little bit as we start talking about improving secure score, as we start talking about workflows, that kind of thing. So, from the uh, analyze page here, I'm going to move into manage. Um, I want to you know, improve some secure scores for SharePoint. So I'm gonna head into workflows. And you can also search and I'll show you what that looks like uh, here in another a portion of this webinar. But, um, you know, here's a couple of different uh, workflows that we have. These ones are all built by Skykick. We have a solutions team that uh, puts out a new uh, command or workflow about once a week, once every couple of weeks, depending on you know how deep that particular um, security remediation goes. Um, in this case, I'm going to scroll down here to uh, improve secure score, SharePoint Online. Seems, seems like our culprit. We're going to go ahead and open it up and we'll take a look. So 
There's a couple of things before I jump in that I want to just talk briefly about uh, around workflows. So for those of you who've been in these webinars before, you'll probably have a pretty good understanding of what they are. But essentially, the way I think about them is it's really just um, a codified multi-step process. So they have a robust notes feature. Uh, all of our workflows will come with those so that they have context for each of the steps. Um, they provide guidance for the users who are actually doing these um, without necessarily having to you know, go and research and look other places. We pull in that Microsoft documentation right here. And then of course you can create your own workflows as well for your own you know, run book practices, things like that. And basically it just um, makes sure that you can standardize so that you know everyone in your organization is doing everything the same way, the best way every time, right? That's really the goal. So you know, with that preamble, we'll go ahead and run this workflow. So we can change the name if we want. We're going to go ahead and save and run. Give that a moment. Um, there's a couple of things that I'm going to call out here as well as this uh, loads in around the workflow itself. So you'll notice that these, these steps are optional. Um, you can create them or edit workflows to make required or optional steps. Uh, that's basically so that way uh, for those processes that have some variability, like, hey, for this customer, you may need to do X. For another customer, you may not need to do it. Uh, you're able to kind of skip those steps, um, that kind of thing. So a couple of things I want to call out here is that uh, most of the workflows uh, you're able to run across all customers if you like, you know, a single customer or, you know, uh, any a number of customers anywhere in between one and all, <laughs> if you like. Uh, so you know, we're doing that. Uh, this particular one allows you to also generate an output report. So it'll tell you basically what's been done, um, which is really, really useful. And so um, to back up a little bit and provide context for, you know, what the uh, this system's actually doing right now is, you know, we're using Microsoft recommendations from a secure score perspective um, to target SharePoint. And so that falls under three categories. One is disabling external user resharing, which is that first step. And so but that basically means is, hey, I, I might share a, a document or a folder with somebody outside our organization. Um, well, there might not be anything that's actually stopping them from resharing that with somebody else, either outside their organization or you know, someone else within their organization. Either way, you know, your user, your, your customer loses control of who has access to their SharePoint. So really important to lock that down. The second is very similar, uh, like in that sort of same vein. Um, if you're like me, uh, oftentimes instead of you know doing the actual share where I'm designating specific people to have access, I just grab the link and you know throw it into a Teams chat or you know whatever collaboration tool I'm using at the time. And you know that's the same thing, right? That link is going to be uh, available unless you change the settings, you know, in perpetuity. And so same deal. You don't want to. Um, you know what you want to lock down the access and specifically like how long people have access to something right so super important and then a third of course is just making sure that we're disabling basic authentication using modern auth um, so that you're more secure on the latest security protocols all that good stuff to actually um, manage sharepoint and the people who are accessing it so um with all that, uh, it's super simple to to do all you have to do is pick your customers pick whether or not you want to report click run um, for the sake of time, I'm just going to skip this step. I can do that because these are optional. Um, you'll go on to the next step. Same deal. Um, you just pick your customers, whoever you want. Could be the same ones, could be different ones. You know, you have that freedom. Pick whether or not you want to report. Click run. And, and hopefully what you're seeing here is that this is a very uh, easy to standardize on. The experience is very much the same. And while this is all, you know, SharePoint specifically, if you were, you know, in our last month's webinar, you saw us do very similar things for um, the M365 tenant and um, Azure AD. You saw us do some stuff for mailboxes and set policies, and it looks very similar. Uh, and again, the key here is standardization and optimization. So again, uh, we'll skip. And uh, again, you'll notice, hey, now to do the exact same thing, uh, again, I pick my customers, pick whether I want to report and click run. And um, just so you have some context, this is what the report looks like. So essentially, this is for that first step. Uh, I pre-cooked it. I like to you know, pre-bake my cake like Julia Childs. And uh, what you'll see here is, hey, did we disable this uh, external user resharing? Yes, we sure did. Hey, it's already been configured. So uh, I've done this a couple of times. So when I ran this report, it's also letting me know that, oh, this was already done to begin with, and it's already on. Um, so super simple, a lot of good feedback, really powerful but easy to use uh, solutions here uh, in Security Manager to secure those um, collaborative tools like SharePoint. Michael, back to you. 
<laughs> Great. Thank you, Lee. You know, uh, by the way, uh, we have a lot of requests to post uh, the link to our to the webinar we did last month. Uh, so we're doing that. Um, so look for that link. And then, yeah, SharePoint is near dear to my heart, as, as you already know. But the world is moving even beyond SharePoint now at the intersection of mail-like functionality, communication, and collaboration. And that is Microsoft 365 Teams. And we at the SkyKit, we're using Teams every day. And uh, I used to think that the, the number 250 million users in my head, but as of two weeks ago, when I was listening on the Microsoft uh, earnings call, they just announced the number 300 million users are now using Teams, 300 million. And as part of the NCE, that's a new commerce experience, Microsoft made some big changes, right? On how they pay partners, especially on Teams, in Teams. The incentives used to be just on selling Teams, but now, you're not, the partner not going to get fully paid on selling the teams, but also really about activating the workload, getting active users, usage, adoption from the customers. And I heard from a lot of the partners that the usage of teams may not be where it needs to be. And uh, we may ask why. And it's no secret that most of these are stood, if not, no, like 80, 90% of that probably stood up the uh, during the COVID time. And you, people in this community, really did the hero's work. You did that to keep everybody connected and keep work engine humming. That's like a hero's work. And as we think about it, are they at the right level of security? Some of us may think maybe and maybe not. Uh, are they getting the right kind of usage and adoption and pre-hydrated with the Active Directory in the business context? In many cases, probably not. So now, it's opportunity for us to do this thing more securely, more compliant, out of the gate with usage, adoption, therefore providing more value for the customers and ultimately more value for the partners. And the link, I promised uh, about 10, 15 minutes ago that you know your question is gonna get addressed right now because you called out DLP, perfect, right? Because all of our customers, many of our customers are having to think about data loss prevention, think about compliance that you called out, the, the compliance issue globally. And there are dozens and dozens of this type of thing. And I'm not a, you know, I'm not a lawyer in this thing because if I think about any one type of a compliant, probably it, it's this thick, you're actually gonna go down to it. So can we become those experts in this thing? Well, probably not, we don't want to be, but how do we make it easy? for the partners to have that kind of connection easy and, uh, and uh, secure for our customers. Well, with that, we create a set of workflows just for this. So I'll defer to Lee and show us those great automation that he and the team built into Security Manager to do exactly that. Lee? Absolutely. Yeah, let's take a look. So before I jump into that, and I, I promise I will, um, what I want to show is sort of two things. One is another way to find solutions. So one of the things we did earlier was we, you know, we we hopped into Manage, uh, we saw all the different solutions we could look at. We went to workflows and found some workflows there. Um, another thing you can just do is a simple search. So I'm just going to search for Teams. Um, seems relevant to this conversation. Uh, so um, what we'll see is a couple of different things. Oh hey, interesting. Just uh, got a new update into our system. We have workflows on top. This actually changed between our between our webinars. But what you can see is that we have you know four to seven different workflows here uh, at the very top. Um, these are all going to contain things that are relevant to Teams. We have some collections or a collection for Teams. Then we have like 837 you know different commands that you can do to uh, deploy, to manage, to secure Teams. You know, and what we what we hear a lot when I you know talk to partners is, hey, like how do I where do I get started? Where should I start? There's so much that I can do in here. Uh, and so you know my answer to that, and we'll show that today, is hey, let's start with this collection called Deploy and Security for Deployment and Security. Right, so we'll go ahead and jump in. You'll notice that similarly to a workflow, uh, you're also going to have your list of uh, commands. You're going to have your notes. 
Again, this is really helpful to provide context. Unlike a workflow, um, you can't run this in sequence. Um, there, it's basically just a toolbox that allows you to put in commands and uh, workflows and, and group them however you like to make it easier, make sure that the right things are at your and your team's fingertips. Uh, we have other ways to group things as well. You can tag commands, collections of workflows. You can favorite them uh, so they show up in different places in the app just to make sure that you can customize your workspace. Um, but let's sort of get back to Teams. Um, as we start thinking about this, right, the you know Michael was kind of talking about Microsoft changing the way that they they operate when it comes to payouts for Teams and and you know really focusing on usage, which isn't surprising, um, but it may, means that you know an effective deployment strategy is really important when it comes to onboarding your customers. And so um, I really like this particular command, um, one of my favorites when it comes to Teams because it's super simple, and um, we'll let that load up here in a moment. And so basically what this one's going to do for us is it's going to uh, create Microsoft 365 Teams from existing groups. So basically you can kind of use the collaborative units that already exist for your customers um, to create their teams. And so uh, again, super simple. All you have to do is pick the customer uh, that you want to work with, right? And then run the command. That's all there is to it. You know, very simple, uh, makes it, uh, really easy for you to create teams. Now there's other commands in here that, you know, you can create new teams, you can uh, use uh, pick specific uh, groups to make teams. This one just sort of uh, takes the shotgun approach and just says, hey, you know, let's let's convert your collaborative units into Microsoft's newest one, which is Teams. Um, and you know, it gives you all the benefits like uh, chat and, you know, a file share, all that good stuff, meeting notes, uh, makes it really easy. Uh, so let's head back to our collection. That's that's one thing, right? Hey, we've deployed Teams. Great. Well, now how do we how do we secure it? How do we make it um, easier? And so I think we talked about this a little bit, and this is um, you know making good on that promise <laughs> uh, that Michael and I had, which is talking a little bit about DLP. So um, let's talk about that. So I'll give that a moment. And so this is data loss uh, prevention. And so uh, essentially what this is doing is, you know, Microsoft has done a lot of uh, research and did a lot of the heavy lifting when it comes to some of the detections and all those kinds of things. And this just really lets you enable those in a very easy and straightforward way. Uh, so basically, you know, for example, for your, you know, financial data, you know, across the different countries, you know, Microsoft has algorithms that detect things like um, the number of characters in a social security number in a credit card, in a bank account, to make sure that people aren't sending those via email or via Teams. Um, and so this is really handy. Again, you select your customer uh, or customers. Um, you pick whether or not you want to just like test it out, get a feel for it, um, whether you whether or not you want someone in your organization or your customer's organization to be notified um, if an infraction uh, has been detected. Like the system will protect you from it, but it also flag that and say, hey, someone tried to do this, which is probably a handy thing to do if you're you know, protecting customers who are in regulated industries. Uh, and so you can see they're kind of grouped by the regulated industry and then country. So for this, hey, we're in the US. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do US Financial, you know, US Graham Leach. But again, this is super useful, especially if you're managing globally, right? You have things for Australia, Germany, UK, um, uh, both, you know, for financial, for health, and for other industries. And again, the model is exactly the same, right? You just click run, uh, and it's going to go ahead and enact those policies in uh, that tenant uh, to protect, you know, end users from themselves, right? You know, the weakest link in every security chain is, and, you know, say it with me, <laughs> it's the end user, right? So making sure you're protecting them. Uh, from themselves, your customers, from their end users in some ways is uh, really important and it's a big part of the MSP job when it comes to security. Uh, yeah, so that's Teams. That's a great way to deploy, a great way to secure. Uh, and again, we have a ton of other commands and workflows. I just wanted to show a couple uh, in the interest of time here. Back to you, Michael. Great, Lee, and thank you. The, you know. Talking about easy button, you know, we talked before the GDAP, but but this is really a couple of toggles, right? And you have the mm -hmm. power of how to serve, you know, servicing all of our clients, the customers, according globally, according to the uh, to the different uh, uh, standards. And I I'm not an expert on Gram Leach, but I had to look it up, you no know, GLB. But gosh, right here, it's a, we already built the power at your fingertips. Thank you, Lee. Um, 
stay on there because um, so we you know you did a deep dive on Ling's question there, but some mm -hmm. other question we have a lot of question here. Let me take a couple, then we we uh, and then I'll, I'll promise I'll no definitely get to all of them. Um, some one of the questions: Hey, DLP is cool um, within the Microsoft Teams security, but what the other things you can do for us on Teams security? I think there's lots of things you're already building the per, uh, the product there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Well, let's go back to our search results really quick. Um, give that a moment. Uh, and so, you know, there's a couple of different things that we can do. Let's make sure we have the actual search there. Um, so yeah, there's a couple of different things just in, in raw commands, like I said, we have, you know, over 800, a couple are, you know, setting your privacy for all your teams, some teams enabling, disabling and en encryption. Um, there's a lot of really powerful things you can do in there. Um, I don't remember what it's called offhand. Um, it's but there's one that basically lets you, you know, block external communications. For example, um, Microsoft, I think like nine months, maybe a year back, sort of opened up uh, Teams also to just sort of regular, you know, free Skype um, or free Teams, so that people can just kind of message. <laughs> and again, uh, a lot of things in here to just help protect end users from themselves and, you know, protect companies from uh, liability and also just, you know, shrink that um, attack surface when it comes to, you know, breaches and things like that. Great. Thank you, Lee. Mm -hmm. um, so as I promised, uh, we have a special offer for this audience. But before I do that, I want to call out um, the lucky winner for today's uh, uh, gift card, uh, Mackenzie Clapper of a more field communications. Mackenzie, congratulations. Uh, we'll make sure that I reach out to you um, to arrange for the gift card. All right, so let's put on the offers, please. Again, thank you for your time today. And uh, for, yeah, thank you. Um, we'd love to invite you. For, for some of you already in the security manager, thank you. And uh, hopefully we have demonstrated some value that really could help make this powerful application to make your job a little bit easier. So we invite you to have a one-on-one -on -one security demonstration and consult with a Skykick expert and at least one of them. And as you know, the many of some of the partners already took advantage of it last took advantage of Lee last time. So uh, you know, just the same as before, clear your calendars, you know the drill. Uh, you can be busy. And and also we talked about say for for about three quarters of us that we haven't migrate to GDAP and uh, May 22nd is coming day by day. Do it for free. Um, get a free month of security manager. The easy button is really going to help all of us. And uh, you could still do it after 22nd, but you'll be manual. And uh, you know, just, just do that in the next 10 days and it's going to make your job and make your life a lot easier. Um, and also we have prepared a whole set of uh, content ready for you, the partner to use with your customers, including customer targeting aid, uh, quick, start, quick start guide, et cetera. It's right now available already on the readiness hub to log in and it's all at your fingertips. And I just have one more thing. Uh, let's go to the next slide, please. Uh, you came to the you came to this webinar. Clearly, you're one of the forward thinking uh, partners that are thinking about security and the value of securing all your data. And you probably will agree if I say security is not one and done. And security is about being proactive. Security is about being having a plan B. And today we've been talking a lot about security manager. One of the things that Skykick does is on cloud data backup, which is creating backup and a redundancy copy of all of your Microsoft 365 data. And I think that should be part of your security strategy. And we want to invite you to a subsequent webinar in about two weeks' time uh, that one of my colleagues will be hosting on exactly that on the backup strategy. I'm looking forward to seeing you there. So let's go back to the, the previous uh, uh, offer slide, please. Let, maybe let's stay on this for a little bit. Uh, we have the Bitly there. We have the QR code. Um, and then I know we scheduled for 45 minutes, but we have a lot of questions here. Uh, I want to be respectful of people's time. Lee, are you ready to do a rapid fire session? Let's do it. All right, let's, uh, without further ado, let's dive right in. Um, okay, one of the questions is, can the customer have access to self-manage their security? Fantastic question. 
It's a good question. Uh, at the moment, no, that is something that is on our roadmap that we're um, actually currently, you know, working with partners to understand their needs, their customers' needs, because, you know, it, it's one thing to build sort of a self-surface capability, but it's also important to make sure that it's something that your customers will actually use. Uh, and so right now, you know, we're, we're talking to partners about that, and it is something that we're, we're wanting and intending to release into this product. Absolutely. Yeah. It's a great question. Yep. Uh, just a corollary to that. Mm -hmm. Within the environment, we didn't get to show today because we focus on you know the identity access management and the, the collaboration, as we said at, at get go for the for the webinar for the webinar. But one of the things you could do as a partner is that there is a customer view tab that you can click into any and every one of your customers and show that view right there. That will that can give you a lot of ammunition, a lot of the power as you go into a conversation with your customers and show you the value that you're providing for them. Okay, um, one other question here is, when new customers are added to our CSP, what is the preferred process of adding those new customers to the security manager? So Lee, do I have to do this one by one? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, it, it really depends. We have a couple ways to do it. Uh, partner center integration is my my personal favorite method. I find it to be the easiest. Um, you know, if a single partner or a single customer does come in, I mean, it, you're kind of doing it one by one because you got to add them in. Um, the good news though is that we're currently working. Uh, the team's literally working on it now uh, on a sort of auto sync so that the customers will automatically get pulled in if that's your choice. And we'll also have a sync button that'll let you sync them manually if that's uh, what you want to do as well. So we'll have those. Uh, features coming out here uh, probably the next couple weeks or so. Great. Um, the other question here is, are there a specific, I think this is about licensing question, uh, Lee, are there a specific Microsoft 365 products you need to use Security Manager? Hmm, that's a great question. Uh, no, uh, you, it's com completely licensing agnostic. Obviously, um, when it comes to security, Microsoft has kind of, you know, tiered the way that their security offerings work based on licensing. So there may be some things that exist within Security Manager that, you know, trigger a setting that's only available in an E5 or on Azure Active Directory Premium P2, something like that. Um, so there might be those instances, but to actually use Security Manager, um, the core functionality is all going to exist there. Um, um, uh, so it's like I say, licensing agnostic. Great. Um, and if the customers are already created using the other methods, does it recreating them create a duplicate or hmm. do they merge now using partner center to authenticate? Yeah, great question. So they'll merge. That's based on their um, Microsoft um, ID. So it's essentially the dot on Microsoft account is how we, uh, how we match, so they'll match, and then uh, your whatever connectors you know you've created that are you know quote unquote duplicated on the uh, on the um, partner center side will just get overwritten, and they'll be connected via partner center using DAP or GDAP. Hopefully, hopefully GDAP. Uh, hopefully, you're yeah. migrating. Uh, <laughs> easy, uh, so easy button. Exactly. Yeah, use that easy button. Um, yeah. So they'll merge. Yeah. Cool. Um, the other one here is uh, how do you ensure workflows you want to apply as the standards are applied to every customer, especially ones that are new after the initial run? Is there a check that can show settings that are not applied? Mm, yeah, that's a really good question. Um, I didn't show it in this particular workflow, but a lot of them, especially when you're talking about, um, you know, uh, other other settings like uh, anti fish. Um, safe link policies, things like that. Um, a lot of our workflows will start with a report, a report. So you'll run a report, it'll give you a list for either all of your customers or just the ones that you've picked on whether or not they actually have those standards applied. And then from there, you can kind of plan your own uh, way to you know, take down these uh, uh, the security vulnerabilities, right? You can pick and choose which customers based on those reports. So those will be built into those workflows. Cool. And another question we can't answer uh, live about, you know, during the call, but uh, uh, I, I want to surface to everybody. And sure. uh, the question is, as a direct C as a direct CSP and a switch to GDAP, we noticed that we lost delegate access to Visual Studio Marketplace and Visual Studio Management. We're working with a CIP CSP support to see what's going on, but anyone else having trouble? This question might oh. be to the broader audience, but uh, to see if Ali, if you have a perspective on that. 
I haven't heard that. That's the first time that uh, that's come up in all the conversations I've had about uh, GDAP with with customers. Um, that's something that I'm also interested to under know the answer to because if yeah, if there's gaps and you know, let's face it, we've all gone through uh, technology migrations uh, from Microsoft, and there's there's always there's always a gap. Um, it, it's always good to know so that way we're able to you know better inform each other. Great. And I'm getting a little uh, reminder, making sure that I don't forget Karen's question. Of course, Karen, I will not forget your question. The question is, the question is um, how do we get security manager added to our Skykick portal? What does it cost? And the reason I appreciate your patience, uh, Karen and everyone else, the reason I waited for to, to now to, to, uh, to answer the question is because I really want to, let, let us give a little bit of time to show the product. Think about the product, the easy button that building to make that DAP to GDAP migration super easy versus hours of manual work. And also the SharePoint um, automation, you basically boil down thousands of potential possibility down to three things you need to do to pinpoint those three things in order to increase the uh, the uh, secure score. And of course, the teams, the DLP, right? Dozens of, uh, of the automation. And also one thing that, that Lee also mentioned is that in the product, we have dozens of workflow that's IP from Skykick pre-built for this for this audience. We think that you know, this is the best way to do it, best practice from our uh, from our experience and also from the learning from the partner ecosystem from Microsoft. Dozens of workflow pre-built, hundreds of commands that you could run, and thousands, actually more than sixteen thousand pieces of automation that you could do. So it's powerful yet easy to use. It's out of box and it's very much customizable. For all of that, obviously, obviously we have three different skills, but you could start with as little as $200 per month. So I didn't want to you know, hold people off, but just think about the value that you could be getting uh, from all of these things. So I did not forget that question, Karen. I, I wanted to wait till we see the, really, you know, it's, it's really powerful. And also the other thing that we did last time uh, is about email and mailbox. And we didn't get to do today, or are we building the uh, the endpoint management capability security within this part as well. So this part is getting, uh, like Lee said, every couple of weeks, right? We have a more and more workflows be building. So um, that's why I am super super excited about this product and what it could do for our partner ecosystem, our community. Um, okay, uh, let's take a couple more. Okay, the other question, the follow-up question from before, uh, Lee, um, the, the Erica said, hey, uh, in that question, my intent is to apply security settings. How do I ensure that setting has not been changed? And how do I ensure it is applied to all clients? Would I just schedule the workflow to run periodically? I think he's talking about the automation capability. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, built into Security Manager, we have a monitor and schedule section. Um, and basically what that'll allow you to do is um, schedule um, different commands. Some people use it for like onboarding. Uh, a lot of times people use it for reports. Uh, and so what you can do is just schedule a report to run at you know the frequency of, uh, of your desire. Uh, it'll send you an email with that report. Um, and, you, you know, you, you can have that in your inbox, you know, Monday morning, every week, uh, you know, the 30th, the first, whatever it is, whatever you need to do to actually, uh, you know, make sure that you're uh, looking at your customers and keeping them in compliance with, you know, whatever their security settings should be. So yeah, absolutely. It's a really great way to do that. Yeah. And, uh, and, and also uh, um, back to Karen's uh, thing in the chat. Yes, uh, we, we absolutely will send this on demand link to you. Um, uh, but hopefully, you know, you could see some of the value that we put in for the, for the partner ecosystem. And uh, hopefully you'll be a, a great advocate. Uh, thank you for that, Karen. Um, and also, I just want to remind people really quickly that it's a great opportunity to use leverage that GDAP offer and to try the product for free for one month. And uh, you could get this offer only from the uh, the Bitly link from here and only for this audience here. So I just want to kind of say that out loud with this audience. Um, cool. Uh, let me let me go through this uh, this this live. Let me go through one of the other questions in the in the chat. Cool. Okay. Cool. Um, Oh yeah, one of the questions that came in also is about 
Hey, how is this different from Microsoft Lighthouse? I feel that this is a perennial question that's going to come up again and again. And uh, I, I hear that question from partners a lot. So do you want you want to take a crack at it, and I could I could potentially add on to it if if sure. if it need be. Yeah, I think there's a there's a couple of big differentiators. You know, one is that um, while we're licensing agnostic, you do there are some licensing requirements for Lighthouse. So I think that's a bit that's a big one. Um, it, it's also not really focused on what we're focused on, right? Providing this sort of view across all of the you know security secure score across all of your tenants, and then of course the capabilities are also quite different. So you know we have a lot of things that are focused very specifically on security when it comes to Microsoft rec recommendations, risky users, and alerts. Uh, it's also highly customizable. Um, so basically anything you can do inside your M365 tenant, um, even if we don't have a specific solution built within Security Manager, still likely doable uh, within Security Manager. It might just be something that uh, you can piece together some of that automation that we're talking about in a workflow uh, or build your own commands. Uh, all of that's uh, available here too. Great. Uh, and and also a follow up from Alex. Uh, I mean, I'm just going to read the question. Uh, it's really like comment, which we can Alex, we can follow up with you. It says, uh, "Hey, we have about 15 customers that are buying VS, uh, no, Visual Studio subscription from mm -hmm. us. We noticed that I performed the Skycake GDAP tool that we lost access to VS. Feel free to email. So that's just something probably we just follow up with uh, with yeah, Alex for sure. offline. Let's do yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, cool. Um, well. I, I know we're we're massively over time, but I just want to say thank you um, from the bottom of our hearts from Skykick um, that you know we love this partner e ecosystem as one community. I hope uh, my my uh, my enthusiasm shows because I love working with all of you, and I think we really have something here magical that's powerful, easy to use, and purpose built for the MSP community. And uh, thank you for joining us. Yeah, thank you so much. It's really been a pleasure to be able to work with you all and showcase some of the capabilities that we've built and looking forward to more conversations with you all uh, coming in the future. Great. Well, thank you so much. Have a great rest of the day today. Bye, everyone.